Hi, in this video I'm going to provide a quick summary about multicast on the AOS CX switches, the protocols we're using, and how we recommend deploying it in, in most, most uh, situations. Now, of course, as a summary, multicast addressing is beneficial, really, because it allows us to enable one-to-many or many-to-many -many communication amongst hosts within a network. Uh, typical applications that are going to be using these types of solutions are going to be audio and video streaming type solutions, desktop conferencing solutions, and of course collaborative computer uh, computing solutions or other simil similar applications like that. The multicast routing protocols that we're leveraging on the AOS CX switches are going to be protocol independent multicast, sparse mode and dense mode, uh, IGMP, so Internet Group Management Protocol, as well as multicast source discovery protocol. So let's take a look at those protocols. So PIM uh, is really a family of routing protocols that helps form these, these multicast trees that enables us to forward this traffic across a routed uh, network. Uh, PIM sparse mode is a mode that's uh, very common and it actually is assumes that most hopes on the network do not want to receive multicast traffic. So it does not flood multicast traffic. It will really only send multicast traffic to those routers within the network that have specifically requested multicast traffic. Uh, sparse mode uses a concept of rendezvous points, which acts as a central source of information for the sources of these uh, receivers of these multicast data. Now, of course, in this model, uh, if the rendezvous point router has interested receivers in the PIM sparse no mode domain, it'll actually send a join message to the source, and that helps it build a shortest path tree back to the source of this multicast stream. Now, we also support PIM dense mode, and this is different, actually. This is used as a push mode for multicast forwarding. So this is a model that's more suitable for smaller size networks, but with densely distributed multicast members. Because the way dense mode works is it assumes all of these members, these downstream nodes, are going to want to receive this multicast traffic from the source. And so the multicast traffic is actually flooded, and it actually will get pruned when, when uh, sources and nodes start saying that they don't want to receive it. So those are the two main PIM protocols supported. Of course, we also support multicast source discovery protocol. This is really was designed as a mechanism to connect multiple different PIM sparse modes domains. So remember the rendezvous points within the PIM sparse modes are the ones that contain and have all the multicast source access information. And multicast source discovery protocol allows those rendezvous points within different PIM sparse modes domain to share that information. So it's a way of us really easily configuring multicast traffic that, it, that crosses PIM domains. Um, now there is some filtering that's available, so we can actually, we don't have to, we don't have to share all the source address information, we can do filtering. And another great feature of the PIM uh, multicast source discovery protocol is it works with the Anycast RPs also. And finally, we have Internet Group Management Protocol and IGMP snooping. So IGMP really establishes and it maintains these multicast group memberships between that layer three multicast uh, router as well as the hosts on the directly connected subnets. And IGMP snooping is really helpful because as it runs on these layer two devices, it helps constrain the traffic in these environments to only the ports that actually require that multicast flow within that layer two environment. So without snooping, all of the devices would receive it, but with snooping, only the ones that require it receive it. So IGMP is disabled by default, uh, but once it's enabled, the V3 is the default version, and you can see that we support both V2 and V3. So let's take a look at how we're using these in the environment. So this environment here is built out as a data center environment with two racks, two spines, and really our goal, of course, in these types of solutions is to enable multicast traffic between all of the racks within this routed environment, as well as between a different environment on the right that would be a different PIM domain. And all the concepts here could be used in the campus in the exact same way. So these concepts uh, stand for both data center and, and campus. So when we look at here, we'll, we'll on the uh, top of rack side, we're going to have a pair of VSX switches. So we're going to be configuring active gateway on these top of rack switches. And we're going to be doing a layer three routed environment between the racks. 
so when we're configuring these VLANs on these VSX pairs, we're going to add IGMP and we're going to configure IGMP snooping on these VLANs and the VLAN interfaces within these VSX pairs uh, on all of the interfaces that have hosts that would require this multicast traffic. And of course, on our VSX pairs and on our spines, we would configure PIM sparse mode is the recommended, uh, typically recommended uh, the PIM protocol used in most environments today. And of course, that's a configuration that would get configured on any device acting as a layer three router. So in this environment, all the devices. Now, a new feature with 10.4 is Anycast RP. So now we're actually able to, very much like we do Active Gateway on our VSX switches, we're able to use an Anycast IP using a loopback address, and that would be the same Anycast IP on all of our rendezvous points that we want to act as a rendezvous point. And all of our LEAFs or all of our attached devices would be configured to point to that Anycast rendezvous point address. And we would marry that solution with MSDP mesh groups, which actually allows us to group these two routers within this spine environment and group them into this MSDP mesh so that they'll actually start sharing the MSDP and ensure that the uh, source address information between each of those is the same, just like we would with another PIM domain as we see on the right. So MSDP mesh groups is helping us uh, share the addresses with the PIM domain on the right, but it's also helping the spine RPs in this Anycast environment ensure that they both have the same uh, source address information. So that's a quick summary of multicast with regards to the AOS CX solutions for 10.4. Uh, I would recommend checking out the multicast configuration guide. There's a lot of great information in there. And then, of course, the 10.3 or the, uh, no, the 10.4 under the hood session, which has some information about these updates that came in this 10.4 session. Thank you.